Hello Squawks Head here with another instructional video on the K-50 Black Shark Attack Helicopter. In this tutorial I'd like to talk about the anti-tank weapon system of this aircraft, namely the Vickers, or as NATO call it, the AT-9. Now there's 12 of these missiles on this attack helicopter, and they began development in the 1980s and they entered in service in 1992. By the early 2000s, this weapon was carried on the Su-25T close support aircraft and also this, the K-50. Now these are supersonic, laser beam riding, anti-tank guided missiles and they're tube launched from these tubes you can see here uh, and they're assisted with an ejection charge prior to rocket motor ignition. They can travel up to 610 meters a second which is extremely fast which means less time on target of course meaning it's less vulnerable when being deployed and uh, they allow for target selection post launch as well very much like the Hellfires because they use a laser system to ride along. Now the effective range of these missiles is 8 kilometers during daylight operations and 5 kilometers at night depending on how effective you use the Cheval and the Cheval is the TV system located at the front of the helicopter here and this is used primarily to deploy the Vickers uh, along with the laser system there. Uh, it can also be used for the cannon and we'll save that for another video. But these missiles, they stay on target via sensors in the rear. They have two of these sensors that mean that it centers along the laser as you fire it. It has a single servo motor and probably more notable when deploying these munitions is the way it uh, moves through the air. They rotate in a sort of corkscrewing motion along their longitudinal axis, correcting for yaw and pitch as they go. It's a real distinctive feature of deploying this Vickers. Anyway, they can be fired in singles or pairs, and as I said before, they use the TV system here to be deployed. So, that's a little bit about them. You're probably wanting to get in the cockpit and shoot these things uh, as much as me, so let's, without further ado, jump in. Okay, here we are in the cockpit, and if you look at the HUD here, you can see we are in a hover, uh, indicated by this square being a point on the ground and this circle being the black shark um, maintaining itself over this square. If you don't know how to get the black shark into a hover, I do suggest you check out my other video. I've done a video on how to get us into a hover, avoiding a few pitfalls and so on. But for this video, uh, know that being in a hover is a much easier position to deploy the Vickers than while moving. Remember, we don't have the luxury of having another pilot uh, in this cockpit, so it's just us. So being in a hover will certainly help us deploy these Vickers. Below the HUD we've got the TV screen here which will be monitoring the view from the Cheval which is the optical device located on the front of the aircraft we saw earlier. Here we've got the weapons panel, this has got the master arm switch so we'll need that on in a bit. Uh, various other switches relating to different munitions and the ones we're interested in really are this panel here that will display how many missiles we have. If I select the outboard missiles here, and that is a key bind you will need, selecting outboard, uh, it shows here that um, it's the outboard station. We have 12 missiles remaining. The rounds here, the cannon, we'll deal with the cannon in a different video. The green markers here show where we've got the outboard station selected. So select outboard stations shows us this. And what we've got here is we've got the short, medium and long um, switch here. This can be used for the cannon in terms of the burst length, but also for the Vickers. If it's on short, we'll release a single Vickers when we hit the release button. If we put it on medium or long, we'll release the Vickers in pairs. And that certainly makes sure we destroy anything at the end of it. But usually I keep this in short. Remember, these are supersonic missiles, so they'll travel to their target very quickly, and it's not long before we can just see how effective they've been uh, when they get to target. The last button we really need to look at is this AGM jettison. If we arm, if we hold, press and hold that, we'll release all our Vickers, um, and we won't have any left. So try and stay away from that one, unless you really need to dump them. Below we have the various controls of the TV, we've got brightness and contrast, we'll look at those in a second when we uncage the Cheval. 
So over the left, we've got the navigation and targeting computer controls here. We need to make sure this system's switched on, which is done through the startup process. This K41 button is switched on. We never really want to turn that off. Uh, we do need it for various things, including navigation, so keep that one on. Now next to that is another way we can acquire targets. We can acquire targets via looking through the cheval and slewing the cheval around, or we can use our helmet mounted sight, and we'll have a look at that uh, a bit later. But know that that button's there for when we need it. We need to make sure also that this switch here is in the automatic track mode, which is switched forward. That'll help us um, doing what it says, basically tracking any moving targets or keeping the computer on that target. So keep that switched forward. Next to that switch we have the laser. Now it's very important to note that if we leave this button on and this laser fired, not only will we be detectable by any aircraft that can pick up laser signatures, but we can also burn the system out. So let's make sure that that is only used when we need it. Next to that, we have the reset button. This will reset all of your settings that you've just configured back to reset. So uh, press that if you basically want to come away from the target and you don't need the system, you can hit reset. Now there's four buttons here used for various different modes that we deploy the Vickers in. We've got the auto turn, uh, which will turn us to the target shown on the Cheval, which is a really useful tool in a hover, and I'll show you how that works shortly. We've got moving ground target, which is self-explanatory, that if there's a target that's moving, switch this button and it'll track it. It'll certainly be assisted tracking it. We've got the AA, so air. We can actually lock these, it takes some doing, but you can lock these stickers onto an air target and uh, by clicking this you're telling the computer that it's an air target. And this is air head on or going away from you, so it, um, it knows not to track it going on a sort of horizontal axis, it's actually coming towards you um, and uh, it lets it know. These are all to assist how the computer tracks targets. Okay. Right, well we best get to uh, get this thing fired up. So having selected the outboard um, missiles, remember, bind that key, select outboard, so look, here we are, I'll just turn it off, and then you can select outboard station. If we look up at the HUD, here we've got NT12 saying we've got 12 missiles left, and we've got the outboard station selected. Next, we want to select the number of Vickers we want to fire, I'm going to keep it on short, so we do one at a time. We'll arm, put the master arm on, so the weapon's now live. And we'll press on the cyclic, you'll see there's an uncage uh, schwal stroke designate target switch. And you need to bind that, so we're going to hit that on my cyclic. And there we go. Here we've got an image of uh, the bore sight of the schwal. And that's depicted here on the HUD. You'll see there's a circle that tells us where the cheval is looking. And what we can do by slewing the cheval, and again, these will need to be bound in your control settings, so slew up, down, left, and right. We can slew this cheval down, and we'll start to see the image in front of us appearing. There we go. And conveniently for this tutorial, we have a stationary convoy and there's a moving convoy behind but a stationary convoy on the beach they're not attacking us so it's nice and easy for us this one so another few bindings we need the narrow and wide view of the schwal bound and also the increase and the decrease the tv size buttons and you'll see those the i think the exact wording is uh, tv target frame increase and TV target frame decrease, as well as Schwal narrow view 23 times and Schwal wide view seven times, and you'll see why we need those. Looking here, we are currently defaulted to the wide view of seven times. If I press the narrow view button, we'll get a zoom in. There's only two levels of zoom on the Schwal, so be mindful of that. So we're gonna zoom in, and we're going to slew across to a target. So let's do that with my little mini stick that I've bound. 
Okay, the next thing we need to do is we need to designate the size of the target. And we can do that with this box here. So increasing size, we can make the box bigger here and decreasing. And what I would say is you want the box um, as small as possible that covers the target. Because the wider, you've got to imagine it's a wider parameter um, for the missile to strike and it's less accurate. So as small as you can get it with it locking on the target is uh, better in my opinion. Also, if we're struggling with the view that we're seeing in the Schwal, we can change the brightness with this center knob here, this one here. We can change the brightness up and down. So there we go, let's make it a bit brighter. And then next to that we have the contrast. We can press and hold, change our contrast. This is really useful at night when you're trying to locate targets. It's very difficult. Remember, the K-50 is not really designed to deploy these munitions at night. Um, certainly in this iteration of the K-50 we haven't got um, night vision on the Schwal. We have it on helmet mounted sight but not the Schwal. So bear that in mind. It's much better during the day. Right, once we've got a clear picture, now we at no point have we fired the laser yet, uh, and there's a good reason for that. We don't want to let the targets know we're looking at them. Now, the next thing we can do, we can tell the target computer to lock on. And to do that, we press the lock button on the cyclic. So I'm going to do that now. And there's various uh, letters that will come up. And what you'll see here is it's saying TA. That means it's tracking the target that I've locked here. And if you've got... Moving target, let's turn AA off, moving ground target selected, and that tracking on, we shouldn't have too many issues as long as it doesn't go behind terrain tracking that target. The other thing we can also do, which is quite a nice feature, is we can hit auto turn, and what will happen as it tracks that target, the black shot will turn to face. Because one of the things you'll notice when we come to deploy the Vickers, we have to deploy it within a, quite a narrow corridor to make sure uh, it can reach the target. So there we go, we've got auto turn on, moving ground target on, just in case it starts to move. And we've got this TA light. Now just for instance, if we weren't, uh, if we're trying to shoot a point on the ground rather than a target we're tracking, we can hold the lock button here, let's move away from, if ever you want to disengage a lock, just hold down the lock button and slew it away. And we can let go here and you'll see a TR button there, a TR sorry letters there. Those TR are telling us that the laser of the aircraft will be stabilised on a ground point when we fire it. So for now, we're going to stabilise it on a target. So here we go. We're going to hit lock target. And this is the fun bit. And what we're going to do, we're going to turn the laser on. We're going to fire the locked target button, uh, press the lock target button again. That will give us ranging information and we must press it a second time. We must get this range because now the target's point, the laser's pointing at the target, a range of three kilometers. Uh, we are now visible to any sort of laser detecting radar, so we have to be, uh, or laser detecting devices, so we have to be careful of that. If we look up here, we've got a bit of information we need to take note of. This circle here tells us our minimum, which is this bar here, range of the Vickers and that's our maximum range there and any line between around the outside of this circle is our current range to target so we're within minimum range and maximum range and if we're outside of those parameters uh, the black shot will not let us fire the Vickers so we have to be within those next we need to make sure this circle and this is where the Cheval is looking is married up to this circle now You'll, mention, you'll know that I mentioned about how the uh, stations can tilt up and down. Well, this can move up and down, but it can't move sideways. So what we have to do is we have to use the anti-torque pedals on the helicopter to gently move this circle over this circle. So we'll do that now. Here we go. And when we do, we should get a cue. You'll see this C come up here. This C tells us we're ready to fire. We can, uh, all the parameters are set, we can deploy the weapon. So here we go, we're on target. The C's come up. You can see it on the Schwal, and we're going to press the release. Vickers. There we go, rifle. 
and you'll see that real signature movement of that missile as it rotates around its longitudinal axis. There we go, on target destroyed. Nice easy target for us. Now to get to the next target we can hold down the lock button and slew again. Um, let's say we get to this one, he's going, why he's driving into the sea I don't know but I'll let go there and he stops just there as he approaches the water. Right, 2.9 away, let's line up the target, press the release button, rifle, and away we go. Look at that, nice shack there from that missile. Okay, now another way to designate targets is via the helmet mounted sight. Let's have a look at that now. Let's just turn this laser off for a second. Now, if you're flying along and you see a target, um, either sort of uh, starboard or port side, um, and you want a quick acquisition of it, and you've uncaged this Schwal, you can do it by the helmet sight. So, what we can do here, we can switch this helmet mounted sight on, and you'll see, look, there's a little circle or two circles in yellow there, uh, in my view. And what we can do, we can point, we can point this to where we want to, and it's usually within. Uh, quite a narrow arc. You can't, you couldn't, for for instance, there we go, it's flashing. You can't select something that far out. But if we select, say, a target over here, a building, here we go, and we press the uncage button again, watch what happens. The Schwal automatically slews to that location. The aircraft's turned because we've got the auto turn on and we're facing it. It's a really good way of quickly acquiring targets. And actually, it's quite useful for the cannon as well. Um, you can slew the cannon to that uh, and deploy, um, obviously, rounds downrange. Okay, so that's another effective way of targeting. You'll see there. It's quite good fun. Right, let's take that one away. You can also, as I said, uh, locate, search and locate targets via the TV screen. So you can move along and the black shot should follow, which it has. Now remember these have an 8 kilometer at maximum range uh, during the day and that really is at the end of it. Um, another thing to note on the map is you can see where you're looking. That's quite a good indication. It's not such a good indication of range to the target but uh, it does give you an indication of the direction you're looking if you want to um, plot waypoints etc. We can flip this up to medium and we'll deploy a pair just to make sure. There we go, and we can hit the release button once we're lined up. Let's line the plaque shark up and hold release. And we should get, oh, we need our laser, remember? So laser on, hit the lock button. We get ranging information of three kilometers. We've got a C up there, which means we can fire. Hold down the release button. There we go, two rifle. Look at that, rifle, rifle. And I don't think that truck's going to put up with that. To be honest with you, there we go. There we go. So it's a quick tutorial, really, on the deployment of the Vickers. Uh, this file can be used for other munitions, um, even bombs, believe it or not. But um, certainly for the cannon and rockets, we can use it. Uh, and we'll save that for another video. But just get out there, practice with it. Um, it takes a little bit of while to get used to. But once you get it, you'll find um, you can start operating it quite quickly, uh, even if you're moving as well. Um, and that's uh, is a bit of an art to it. And I should imagine these pilots get to capacity pretty quickly, but they have to train for it, I'm sure. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll put up a link to the hover video so um, and the startup video so that you can certainly learn to start up and hover before deploying these Vickers. But if you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments below. Um, and please do click a like uh, and a subscribe if you'd like to see more videos. Until the next video, uh, I wish you well and um, hopefully catch you up in multiplayer soon.